my name's Britt. I'm a registered dietitian, and today we are going to talk about the gear. Nothing here has to be fancy or expensive. A fancy kitchen is not a better cooking kitchen. I have a little bit of a cutting board fetish. I love cutting boards. As you can see, I have quite a few. Check out the latest one that I have. Is this not gorgeous? A friend of mine made this for me. It, it's, it's a beautiful board. Not only do you use them for cutting and prepping food and stuff like that, they make amazing food platters. I am a big advocate for things that do double duty, especially if you have a small kitchen and you don't have a lot of room for storage. But I have served meals on all of these, cheese, crackers, you name it. So a wooden cutting board does need to be oiled and you can get a food grade mineral oil for that. I don't always have it on hand, so honestly, I'll just take some olive oil and rub it over the top and like let it sink in. There is a lot of evidence that shows that it does not absorb bacteria the way people had originally thought when using raw food. However, I don't cut chicken on these. I use a plastic one like this. It's usually smaller and that's what I use to cut chicken on and then I just throw that in the dishwasher because then you know for sure that it's gonna be clean. Which leads me to knives three knives and a pair of scissors. Honestly, you need more than one pair of scissors. I usually have about four, but you do need a good chef's knife. This is a typical eight inch chef's knife. It doesn't have to be super expensive, but it does need to be a high carbon steel. A sharp knife is a lot safer and easier to use than a dull knife. Once or twice a year, you probably want to get your knives sharpened. The other kind of knives that I absolutely love is a paring knife. This is either called a bagel knife or a tomato knife. These are the ones that I use the most in the kitchen. Always have clean dish towels around. I keep a stack and I'm washing them all the time. You know, after one day of use into the washing machine. You've heard me. I'm like snapping these all the time, but I love a good pair of tongs. A big spoon. Just a plain old big spoon. A big metal spoon rocks. You need a ladle. This is called a spider. I use it all the time to collect all kinds of things in whatever broth I'm using. You will use this, I promise. It's such a great tool to have on hand. I use it to fish things out, to clear a broth. I mean, this is one of the most useful things I keep in my kitchen. A brush that goes in the dishwasher, ideal. Wooden spoons and a potato masher. If you have these things in your kitchen, you're gonna be set. Measuring cups. Measuring spoons, you need a few of those. Storage containers, I like glass ones. They're non-reactive and they don't stain and they don't get all gross. You only have to buy them once. This is my rolling pin. It's mine, I hold it dear. And I usually have a microplane. My most favorite treasured things, they're not pretty. They are beat up. Sheet pans, these are not expensive. They're like seven or eight bucks. So I usually have a stack of them. They stack neatly, and you can bake pretty much anything on them, especially when you combine it with parchment. Parchment, parchment, parchment. A silicone coated paper, non-stick, and it's non-reactive. Broil whatever it is that you're gonna do, throw it away, and it makes cleanup of these a lot easier. You also need cooling racks. Anything where I want the grease to like drip down, I will use the rack on the top. There are two pans, and I use them for exactly opposite reasons. A cast iron pan, which is great for high heat searing. You can also cook a lot more like fattier things in this one. Cool thing about cast iron pans, if you are challenged with getting enough iron in your diet, you can absorb a little bit of iron from the cast iron itself. You can put highly acidic foods in there as long as you're not cooking them for like over 30 minutes or so. So this cast iron pan is relatively cheap. It's like $45. The more you cook in it, the more seasoned it becomes and the more nonstick it becomes. So I'm a big, big fan of cast iron pans. The other thing that I keep on hand, a very cheap nonstick skillet. I think it was like 20 bucks years ago. It's still in great shape and I got it to replace a very expensive brand. The thing about a nonstick skillet is you really can't heat it above medium heat because it does increase, what is it called? I'll put it over here. It'll be right there. This, 
I'll use this to make scrambled egg, omelet, a grilled cheese. Also, not expensive though, a giant stock pot. These things, 25, 30, 40 bucks. Boil water in it, pasta in it, you can make a soup in it. You can even do canning and all kinds of other cool things in it. Absolutely one of the essentials I think you need. Along with that is like a salad spinner. It's really important to dry the leaves if you're gonna have a really good salad. Two kinds of nonstick cooking spray. You need a regular nonstick cooking spray and you need one for baking. So these things help guarantee success. I'm a big fan of that. My husband wanted me to tell you about this. It's the butter dish. He has learned from living with me that room temperature salted butter is better than cold butter in a sandwich, on toast, or whatever. It's spreadable. It makes your life easier. If it is not at room temperature when you need it, that's a bummer. So that means you have to buy salted butter for the counter. You have to buy unsalted butter for baking. The salt it prevents it from becoming rancid. That's why salted butter was invented in the first place. This is a sponge holder and it keeps your sponge clean and dry. And it can also end up, in, you can just throw it in the dishwasher or something like that. It's a, it's a silly little gadget, but I adore mine. I'm a huge fan of these. So if you are a person who makes pottery, please make these, because these are great for keeping things clean and sanitary. So I love this thing. Now we get into the pricier stuff. Instant pot. So I am really kind of anti-gadget. I'm really, 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 really anti-gadget. But this is a great thing. I've had mine, mine is the oldest version. It's like the smaller one. It's got different buttons on it. So I can't even really use the newer ones. I don't even know. These are life changing. These are fantastic. It's the only way I cook rice. I will show you in another video how I cook hard boiled eggs. That alone is the reason you should get this. The other thing that you should know about these is that cooking under pressure conserves nutrients. A pressure cooked vegetable has more phytochemicals, more vitamin C, more of those other fragile nutrients that usually cook out. They still cook out, they're still less than if you were to eat them raw, but there's a balance. I do have a cast iron pot. This thing is super heavy. It doesn't have to be expensive. My husband's French, so we have- Le Creuset. So it's an expensive one. They come all kinds. And mine, actually, you can see, it used to be white because I even like cook bread in this. It's a great way to make like a, a cover for a gorgeous like sourdough bread. This is one of my favorite things and it's indestructible. You buy it once, you buy it for life and pretty much nothing ever happens to it after that. So I'm a big fan of that. You do need a blender. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Vitamix. I have a Vitamix. My favorite thing about this, what I learned was that you can, it's self-cleaning. Basically, you fill it with water and a pump of dish soap and you turn it into, you, you hit a button and it cleans the whole inside so you don't necessarily have to put it in the dishwasher. My favorite thing in the whole wide world ugh, is my mixer, my KitchenAid mixer. You buy it once, you don't need it again. Many brides get registered for them. It's a very big expensive present. You do not have to get the big, huge, giant one. You can get the smaller one. This is the absolute workhorse and one of my favorite things in my kitchen, but also probably the most expensive. You've seen me use this, the salt box. Have salt on your counter that you can learn to pinch with. You know, season like you mean it. I'm not kidding. Don't be afraid to season it. It's gonna be fine. It'll be better than fine if you season like you mean it. If I had just these things, you have more space and it's just well organized and you have just what you need, you would feel more comfortable. Even if you don't have a lot of counter space, you feel more relaxed and more inclined to attempt to make dinner. Thanks for watching. And if you're still watching after all this, thank you so much. All of this stuff or similar to what I have here will be on my website if you feel like you need it. Admire my cutting board because I still love it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Now I gotta put all this back. I'm gonna leave my cutting board out. That's gonna be admired though. Because it's pretty.
yourself. Roll up your sleeves, tie back your hair, wear shoes. Wanna say that again? <laughs>